morning. How are you, brother? Hey, Will. My name is Vahid Chitos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. I got to tell you, man, I love your profile. I don't know who's doing your graphics, but they're doing a good job. I love your profile. Hopefully, I can get mine to that level, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's called an app, brother. It's called an app. You know, I never got used to these apps that are like, I'm just not a graphic guy. I don't know. I don't have the eye for it. But I looked at your profile, and it was cool. And your profile picture is pretty cool, man. Those guns really, really put in a special touch. So, They're Will, somewhere. introduce yourself to me. You got them there? Somewhere. I've got them somewhere around here. Awesome, awesome. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming from. Kind of give them a little bit of your background because you've done Netflix, you've done so much movie, magician. I mean, you got a very diverse background. So I'm going to let you do the, do the good job of introducing yourself to everybody. You've done a lot. Okay, so uh, I think the best uh, and the word to use for this interview, it would be diverse. And I have to tell you that as an actor of 38 years and as a magician and all this other stuff that I do, one of the things I pride myself in is I tell people all the time, I go, I'm uh, a jack of all trades and finally old enough to say a master at a few of them, which includes a couple of a Guinness World Book of Records with guns and ropes and so on. But you know, I've always told people, and I'll tell you, this really plays into what we're talking about, especially Napoleon Hill and all of this stuff, is, is that the more you know, the better your odds are that you're going to succeed. It's like playing poker. If you sit down, or blackjack, if you sit down at a blackjack table and you know uh, that you either want to sit at first and third, and if the person in the middle says, I'm going to split two kings, you probably should get up and walk away. Uh, but the odds in our business, and I am a professional actor, again, of 38 years, and I'm also a, a radio guy of 35 years and a plethora of other things that I do. Um, you know, the, the fact is, is that, the, uh, again, not only the more you have in your bag of tricks will it help you in business and in life, but it will also help you if you're speaking to people, like, for instance, you and me. We're speaking, and I could probably, even though this is 15 minutes long, I can go for three hours and 15 minutes and you and I would be just breathtaking. And the reason why is, is that, you know, on top of having all these skills that I do, a uh, professional magician, trick roper, gun spinner, uh, I'm a professional clown. I worked with Cirque du Soleil for four years. Uh, I'm, I've got two films on Netflix, one on Amazon. I've got another couple of big uh, series things coming out. I can't say much about, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that, having all these things allows me to be at least a good conversationalist. I love it. I was about to say, you're probably, you're probably going to keep them on for two hours. I probably will be able to keep them for 20 minutes. Oh, you <laughs> will. You, I know you, you will. More than they like me. That's for sure. <laughs> I know you will. I've seen your broadcast, brother, and you do a great job. I'm just trying to put my Instagram in there if you don't mind. But actually, you can sure, see no, it no, there. Let them know so that they, they could. I mean, my team could add it down the line. There we go. We got it. Hey, Luke, there good to go. see you. We got it. So, so, Will, let's let's dive into it. Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. When did you start? How did you start? Well, you know, when I when I started in radio back in boy eighty or seventy nine, probably by eighty eighty one. I left school. I literally left it. I didn't finish. And um, I knew I always wanted to, I was one of those little kids that always knew that they wanted to be a performer. And unfortunately, um, I grew up in the south side of Chicago and we didn't have my parents were, um, what could I say, white trash and didn't really have much going for them. And education was never really important because we just had to make make the basic needs. Uh, Maslow's our hierarchy of needs, um, which is you have a place to live and so on and so on. But, you know, um, the one thing that I did was uh, I, I really um, I got very involved in producing self-help and metaphysical stuff back in the 80s. Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Anthony Robbins. I met and talked to a lot of these people as a producer doing a lot of this self-help stuff. Well, you can't do self-help and not run into Napoleon Hill. You can't, you know, the, the, he is the, 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 the teachings, the understandings, the philosophy of that is really just then, it's not a bad thing, but hashed and rehashed amongst Anthony Robbins, amongst uh, Wayne Dyer, amongst all the people that are the greats in the industry, you know, they, they're picking from that going, this is the original. 
So, you know, the, the, the concepts and the philosophies of Napoleon Hill have always been in my workings to the point where you get, and I know you know this, you get to the point where it's second nature and you start thinking that way and you are able to utilize these things and really sort of stay ahead of the curve. And so that, that's my experience and always has been with people when they say, can you give me any advice? I go, yes, it won't be mine, but I'll give it to you with the passion and the fever that I have. I agree with that 100%. You cannot be in self-development or you can't be trying to find your why or, or what your passion is or your definite purpose without running to Napoleon Hill or running through his students that have utilized the book and Absolutely. his materials and content to be able to teach other individuals how to achieve that. So if right. you had to pick, well, what would what? you what would you say one or two of the principles that helped you the most? Because not having that much, I mean, back then schooling was important to a lot of people. I mean, I was I was barely born in eighty one. So when you when you hey, left school, it. I wasn't even born. So stop it. I'll hang up on you if you keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know, seriously, what are some of the principles? Like if if somebody's watching this book. Are you recommending to people based on your personal experience that if schooling is not their passion, they should get out and don't waste any more time? Is that a good advice? The best way to rephrase what you said would be to believe that you have to learn as much as you can. And I'm a very good testimonial to that because look, I had no education. I left school. My, I, I was so far behind that I didn't, I, I never believed that I wasn't good enough. I never did. My brothers did. And, you know, consequently, they met their demise in whatever way they did. And they, you know, didn't really succeed much. I've succeeded a lot. And a lot of it, again, I can't really give one specific thing that I could pull out because it's become part of me. And you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to spout out one commandment of the Bible and tell you that that is what I base my things on. It's also like saying, are you right wing or left wing? I'm like, I'm chicken wing. I'm in the middle because it d depends on what situation. I mean, I draw personally, um, I'm like a Heinz 57 of self-help. I'm trying to get this my screen to go back the way it was. I'm having a hard time. But the, but the fact is, is that I take whatever I think feels good that helps serve me and the people around me because we live in a world of selfishness. And the problem with that is, is that you don't go very far if you're only thinking about yourself. I always ask people, what do you need? And then again, you can't stray too far from the watering hole with Napoleon Hill and go radical and go, well, I think you should do this. It's always going to put you in the same centered frame of mind. And that's really the key to any business is ask questions. And this is an important dating uh, tip that I, a lot of guys used to ask me about. What do you think? How do I, how do I woo a person? I go, well, every once in a while, shut up and listen. I love it. I love it. With my wife all the time. I shut up all the time. I, I came up with a really great phrase. I say, behind every great man is a woman in front of him with his car keys and directions so he doesn't get lost. I believe that, you know, women have a better grasp of this situation that we call succeeding than we give them credit for, thanks to guys in our demographic. But uh, there are many things with Napoleon. I'm going to get, I'm going to conquer this Instagram thing. I'm having a hard time with here. Uh, but anyway, uh, so again, there's a lot of different things I can tell you, but more importantly, all I want to say, if I say anything about the teachings, the philosophy of Napoleon Hill is just do it. And here's the reason why do it and everything else you can. It's not about one thing. I can't say that I would thank it. I'm holding the award and I want to thank, well, myself because I stuck with it. But I, I have many people I could thank, Napoleon Hill and the, and the philosophies is one. But you have to take little bits of everything and just know that you have one focus 
and that's to be able to be great in life and to get what you want and not be unhappy. I agree with that 100%. Sorry that was I mean, wrong. listen, acting and being a magician is, I mean, you got to stick with it. I mean, those are not easy industries to crack into. Those are hard industries because I'm in LA. Hollywood yeah, is like too. maybe 15, 10 miles from me. And I see it all the time. People go in there a couple of years, they give in. Four or five years, they give in. Or they don't get the right opportunity or they're not connected yeah. to the right people. It's not an in, it's not an easy industry to be in. No, I'm, so a, I'm a lifer. Here. I'm a lifer. People always go, oh, yeah, you know. And I, I, I can tell you right now, I've got about 150 friends on, on uh, Facebook that I've known for 30 years. And they all were, at one point, actors with me. And now they all sit back and go, amazing. You stuck with it. And, and no offense, but we're not happy. And, and, and you know, I'm not going to lie to you. It is the most difficult thing to do because you are constantly, it is not for the faint of heart because you're constantly being told you're too short, you're too small, you're too white, you're too green, you're too gay, you're too straight, you're too whatever, and you can't act. And you have to find the power inside that to self-evaluate yourself in anything, business, and be realistic, but yet be bold to be able to say, I can do that. That's the key. And if you, if, there, if you believe you can't do it, then leave. Because there are many other people that would love to stand in your shoes and, and do what you're doing. It's not easy to do. But we have to be able to believe that everything we compile will help make us successful and make us happy. I agree with that 100%. Let me ask you a question. So if it was... So what, were your parents influential in you sticking with it? Or is it because you saw them not doing it? You're like, I'm going to change this. I'm going to do it. Where did that first inspiration came from? Like, who was your role model at that beginning stages where you're like, I'm watching this guy. This guy did it. I could do it. Or where did you go for that inspiration? How people are doing that or how they could potentially do that? Me. Sounds selfish, but... Again, I grew up in a very bad, dysfunctional family. We moved 15 times before I was 10. People would say, oh, is your dad military? I'd say, no bad checks. Funny, but true. Now, I just, and we had our coffee tables were boxes covered with whatever. And this is back in the 70s, man. And I'm telling you right now is, is that um, I, I did get a very, very important lesson from my mom and my dad, my stepdad. My mom was married four times. And until this year, I'm 55, I found out who my real dad was because of DNA testing and uh, whatever that name of that place is. I don't know what it is. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that it's always been me in my life. I don't want to sound selfish, but it's always been me against the world. If someone said to me, I remember being very young, I was bullied all the time. I ran home from school. Well, I'm telling you something. After about four to five weeks of running home from school, ain't nobody that was faster than me. Because love it, love it. You take it, and you turn something into it. I, you can be cliche and say lemons into lemonade, but or you can just say get her done. Because you know you you have a choice. You can stand still and be hit by the truck, or you can step out of the way, and then run to try to beat the uh, beat it to the uh, to the bus stop. You know, uh, I wish I could say that my parents were a good influence, but the bad influence. And this is an interesting uh, fact, by the way. I believe people learn by either negative or positive. My wife grew up in Seattle. Her, her mom and dad, her dad made, you know, 900000 a year. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know why she's with me. She's beautiful and smart. Uh, I have a five and an eight-year-old kid. But the, but the, yeah. But the fact, I the love fact of the matter is, is that, you know, um, you know, they're very academic. She's right now, she's going after a doctoral for whatever. And, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, I've always tried to put myself with people I believe are smarter than me. Um, and, and by doing that, I believe you succeed. If you sit, it's like going into the ballet class. If you become the best person in ballet, and you're looking around going, oh, yeah, I'm big fish, small pond. <laughs> yeah, you don't learn. 
You have to go into the fear. You have to. Because if you don't, you sit there complacent and go, yeah, I'm cool. And if you're cool, you're cool. But I don't know anybody that succeeds that's cool with sitting back waiting and watching people. Retirement? I agree never that. heard of that. But, 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 but I said that, that you just mentioned that, that you can learn from the positive and the negative, both on that side. You definitely, right. it's, it's, it's both ways. You just got to, but I think the decision maker is you. Yes. Well, I yeah, and that. you know, yeah. you said, I'm trying to type in again. Uh, you said uh, to me, or I said to you, thank you for pulling me back on track, is that I learned by not being told I'm great. I learned by being told that I was garbage, that I was not good enough, that I would not be able to do this. And so I basically set out to prove everybody wrong. And I've done it in spades. I love it. And you've been doing it for, I'm telling you, I was looking at your profile. I'm like, this is cool. I just want to grow up be like this guy. He's got good <laughs> profile picture. He's done all that stuff. Listen, the fact that you've been on Netflix, man. I don't know. Maybe Netflix needs to call me and get me on their show. I don't I, know I what think, I can do. I think, so. I think they do too. I, I think they do too. They're but... going to have a hard time picking a spot for me or picking a play for me, but I love it. Well, Listen, they have plenty of places. I will tell you right now, but, uh, Show that book and tell people because that's a good book. Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't got it, you go online, get it, Amazon it, Audible, whatever. Do something. Get the book, get the material. And start putting yourself around, surround yourself with good people. But don't ever forget, it's not an outside job. It's an inside job. You got to do it from within. It's an inside job. Don't wait for somebody magically show up to take your hand. If they do, great. You're part of the exception. That didn't happen to many, many of us where we had to kind of um, take some punches in the face maybe once in a while and just, you know, learn that, you know, it's not all sunny and rainbow and everything else. You got to go to work and just stick with it. Never give up. We'll never give up. And, and you stick with it. But that's tough, though. I know we're not talking about all the tough times you have. I know we could probably write a book about that. But that's well, what a lot of people would... don't get to see. They see the success. I would like to leave you with one thought. If that's okay. Definitely. Um, you, you know, uh, I live in Temecula, California, which is about two and a half hours away from LA. And people tell me all the time in this industry, I get a lot of people that direct message me, by the way, don't direct, me direct message people asking them and don't beg to them. I get a lot of people that say, can you put me in your next movie? I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll fly you here. Where, where, uh, wow. I mean, really, you'd feel good about that anyway. But what I wanted to say was that, we, everybody has their story. I'll say that again. Everybody has their story. And I'd love to believe that mine is the most dismal and I pulled out like a phoenix from the ashes, but there are many people that have been abused, uh, uh, you know, uh, everything that from under the sun and they have pulled themselves out up by their bootstrings and done what they needed to do. You know, when people tell me, they go, well, you know, I tried to acting blah, 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 and I, it's so tough. I'm like, I drive four to five times a week, just so we know, back and forth to LA, which is two and a half one way, three and a half one way, the other way back, to go to an audition that lasts that long. So don't tell me that you've got struggle with what you're doing because my job is based upon me driving six hours a day and going there and pretty much being assured that I'm not gonna get that job. So, you know, fact of the matter is, is that, you know, uh, don't complain because no one likes a complainer. Don't beg because all I have is an ATM and I can't give you cash. <laughs> and, you know, uh, get the book, start reading. If you can't read, because look, I'm the first one to tell you that I spent many years where I would be looking at things going, I don't have time to read. I, I, because I really, in essence, really couldn't read a lot. Get an audio book. Stop making excuses get things done and feel good about what you're doing. And if you can't go get a job at McDonald's and that's okay. If that's what you want to do. I love it. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. I'm looking forward to a lot more. I'm going to let my team know we had a lot of fun and we didn't cover a lot. We still got to go do a lot. I, you know what? I think we should do that two hour video session. You were talking about. I think we do need two hours to cover a lot of stuff. But no, listen, I had fun. Thank you so much for sharing. 
I love what you're doing. Keep it up, brother. I appreciate you taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Well, I want to thank you very much because the fact of the matter is, is that uh, this medium is used on some very bizarre levels from showing people tramp stamps to eating food to showing you that I've got a middle finger longer than the rest of my fingers. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's when people good, do things good to help other people, it definitely comes around tenfold, as you know. So you, my friend, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you're on my Christmas list. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll say hello to the wife. Hopefully we'll do more. Thank you.